everybody. Hundreds of billions of dollars of investments into the United States and jobs, jobs, jobs. The White House pointing to this as a sign of the Saudis' eagerness to work with President Trump and strengthen the U.S.-Saudi relationship. Riyadh is ready to put on a show. American flags fly all over the city. The streets were clean. They even planted new palm trees. Billboards featuring President Trump's face and the face of King Salman lining highways. But political controversy swirling back home following the president overseas. ABC News confirming that a current White House staffer is now part of the federal investigation into whether there was collusion between Trump Divide associates and Russian of officials during the 2016 the presidential campaign. Uh, I do not have any information or knowledge regarding the person of interest uh, that's been referenced. But the White House hopes this trip will help change the narrative, pointing to the president's Sunday speech on radical extremism. It will sound very different from the president's heated campaign trail rhetoric on Islam. The White House says the goal is to unite the broader Muslim world against common enemies. Karen Travers, ABC News, traveling with the president in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Scary approach, a plane crashes with a utility truck when it lands on the runway. And coming up, we'll take a closer look at what went wrong and how this collision could have been much worse. Thrill seekers get the experience they will never forget when they become stranded on a roller coaster. Yikes. Uh -oh. What the theme park says is to blame. Hey, welcome back. One of our viewers sending this picture. This is Adam Smith. He's 13. He's running the half marathon today downtown for the Colfax Marathon. We here at Denver 7 want to wish him Good luck. Looking good out there. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, this is some good news. After three years in captivity, 82 of Nigeria's missing schoolgirls are finally home. They were released earlier this month in a negotiated exchange with the terror group Boko Haram. The Nigerian government said in a statement that the girls were reunited with their families yesterday in the capital city. Trouble on the tarmac. Eight people are hurt after a passenger plane collided with a truck in L.A. The Aeromexico flight struck the utility truck after landing at L.A. International yesterday. Firefighters say all eight victims were on the truck. They're okay, but none of the 146 people on the plane were hurt. There's some of the damage to the wing there. The collision left the truck overturned near a taxiway. There was no fire or spilled fuel, so good news there. And some scary moments for thrill seekers at an amusement park in Texas. The coaster at Six Flags stopped in the middle of the ride. Look at that. Eight passengers were stranded for more than three hours before firefighters rescued them. Six Flags is blaming the mishap on severe headwinds. No one was hurt here. Funeral plans. They're now set for singer Chris Cornell. He will reportedly be laid to rest on May 26th in Los Angeles. The Soundgarden frontman's body will be flown from Michigan to L.A. today. He'll be buried at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Cornell died Wednesday night after performing with Soundgarden at the Fox Theater in Detroit. The medical examiner's office ruled the death a suicide by hanging. He was only 52 years old. The countdown is on. We are just a week away from the Boulder Boulder 10K race. Coming up, some last minute tips on how you can prepare ahead of the race. And today it is a beautiful day. A lot of runners out there this morning for the Colfax yeah. Marathon and maybe some of them will be participating in the Boulder Boulder. Our temperatures today this afternoon still below normal in the low 60s across much of the metro. We'll take a look at when things really start to heat up though in the seven day after the break. Well, can you believe it? We are one week away from the Boulder Boulder mm -hmm. in Denver 7, obviously a proud sponsor of what is hands down the best 10K race in the country. Sure, and this week we'll take you to the finish line to find out what you need to know before you cross the line. We are now one week away from the 39th annual Boulder Boulder. I'm standing right now on the finish line here at Folsom Field and joined with me Olympic gold medalist Frank Shorter. Frank, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Katie. This is one of the best, if not the best, finish in road racing in the world. You get to come into Folsom Field. By the time you do, the, the stands are filling up with runners. Everyone's enjoying themselves. and and, and the University of Colorado has been so wonderful over the years, cooperating, partnering with us to, to allow this to happen. So we have been training really hard. We're ready to run this race next week. So what do people need to know to have the best race yet for them? Well, their number. <laughs> Wear it on the front. Wear it outside all of your clothing. It has a timing tag on the back. It will take your time at all the markers, the mile markers and the kilometer markers uh, around the course. and you know which wave you're in. It's indicated. 
running your wave. And if you move up a wave, because you may impede those runners, you're, you're ranked in your wave. So there's a reason if you move up a wave, you'll be disqualified. You can move back, but you can't move up. It's gonna be really busy in Boulder on race day. What should people do in terms of transportation? Yeah, I try to take RTD if you can. There, there's all sorts of transportation available on RTD from many points uh, around the city. And go to boulderboulder.com to find out or ride your bike, ride your bike and, and be at the start there. And I've heard there's a consolation prize at the end of the race. Yes, you have to run with your ID. Even if you're 69 the way I am, you don't get the beer from Oscar Blues if you don't have your ID. Well, I got mine handy, so <laughs> I'll definitely participating in that. Thank you so much, Frank. Oh, thanks. This is going to be great. I'm so excited. And to learn more about our nine-week training plan, you can visit the DenverChannel.com, brought to you by Revolution Running. We're so close. We are. Can't believe it. And hopefully the weather will be like it is right now because it is nice. It, it is perfect for running outside because it's just cool enough. It's not too hot, but we have had those Boulder Boulder mm -hmm. days where it's sweltering. So oh, we'll, we'll yeah. wait and see because things are definitely going to heat up as we head into next week. Our seven day, we're looking at upper 70s, but let's just focus on today right now. Looking outside, it is an absolutely gorgeous start to our Sunday morning. This is looking out over City Park where there'll be a lot of activity through the day associated with the Colfax Marathon. Vail Village, we're under a mostly clear sky. Trees are green, snow is melting, and near Sterling, we're starting off with a mostly clear day. Our radar and satellite, though, we are showing a few showers down to the south, 570, really quickly moving out of the area. So throughout the day today, across Colorado, we'll stay mostly dry for the first half, and then we'll start to see an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity. But our temperatures outside right now, already 46 degrees at City Park. Boulder now in the mid-40s. Lakewood still in the 30s, same in Arvada, but we'll quickly see those temperatures climb as we head in into the afternoon. So a very pleasant day overall. By 11 o'clock will be in the mid to upper 50s. Low 60s for our expected daytime highs today, but as you can see, right around 5 to 7 o'clock, we do have the chance for picking up a few scattered thunderstorms. In terms of the severity of those storms, we're not looking at real very severe thunderstorms, but still isolated at best and the chance for a few light showers moving through. High temperatures for today will be in the upper 50s, low 60s, Eagle at 60, Steamboat slightly cooler at 53 degrees and across the western slope in Grand Junction 71 and down into Lamar 74. Across the plains will also stay in the 60s. Now looking at our future cast as we go throughout the day today, what we can expect. We'll stay under a mostly clear sky up and down the I-25 corridor till noon. By 1 o'clock, as you can see, some scattered shower activity moving through elevations above 10,000 feet with the temperatures have a slight chance for seeing a few snow showers there in our mountains but really right around 5 to 7 o'clock in and around the Denver metro area south into Aurora then even a few showers up through Fort Collins are possible in terms of the severity of those storms we're not really looking at very strong storms mainly across the far eastern plains where we have the potential for of course thunder and lightning small hail but these will really quickly move out as you can see by early Monday morning we'll be under a partly sunny sky and then once again and a very similar weather pattern. So Monday afternoon, again, we have the chance for a few more showers, isolated thunderstorms, and then things start to calm down as we head throughout the middle and end of the week. So it'll stay pretty unsettled. Just make sure you have the rain jacket handy for the afternoon hours, but enjoy the morning. Make sure you have the sunglasses, the sunscreen if you're spending time outside this morning. Low temperatures tonight won't be quite as cold. We'll be in the low 40s early Tuesday morning, low 30s, partly sunny throughout the day, and then Wednesday we'll be back in the 70s. Typically we should be in the low 70s for this time of the year. So nice. Still a little bit cool the next couple of days. And then look, we're near 80 Thursday and right. Friday. Chance Look's for that. a few storms though Thursday as well. Look at that weekend, 77, 73. I'm excited. What was that move? That was a happy dance. A happy dance. <laughs> but today's t just as nice, I think. I know. Nice. All right, Kate, thanks. <laughs> hey, at 722, rescue crews tried to guide a humpback whale stuck in the Ventura Harbor in Southern California. Look here. The 35-footer was swimming in circles between docks yesterday afternoon. The whale wasn't hurt, just stuck. Good news this morning, he was guided out with the help of underwater sounds. How cool is that? On the hunt, DU Lacrosse is making national headlines as it looks for a national championship. We'll take a closer look at the pioneers in the field and their run toward history. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Denver 7 Sports Extra. I'm Allison Mastrangelo. The DU Pioneers taking on their western rival Notre Dame in Long Island. 
The prize, a trip to championship weekend in Foxborough. Something head coach Bill Tierney and the Pios are hungry for. After losing the first round last year, second quarter, the Pios able to force a turnover, and Connor Canizero in transition shoots a laser in the back of the net. Pios up 5-1. That's where the third quarter, the freshman Ethan Walker finds the twine for his 38th goal of the season and grabbing his 10th hat trick. Not too shabby for a freshman. Pios up by 10. Final quarter, the Beast Baptiste in his comfort zone as he takes this one right off the faceoff and runs it down the field, netting his first goal. And Baptiste would finish the game with 21 straight faceoff wins as the Pios win it 16-4, advancing to their fifth NCAA semifinal in the last seven seasons. And they'll play the winner of the Maryland-Albany game later today. We haven't seen our own. We haven't seen Albany. I'm sure that's going to be a good game. I hope it goes 23 overtimes. And... Uh, um, <laughs> But, you know, look, we, we, uh, we need to decompress a little bit here. That, that Notre Dame team is as well coached a team as there is in the country. And uh, those kids played a hard out. Rockies taking on the Reds in Cincinnati. First inning, Mark Reynolds giving fans another reason to champ be like Mark as he hits a single to left. DJ the Mayhew scores rocks on the board first. Fifth inning now, the little ninja using the sun to his advantage because the Reds' Adam Duvall can't see it. And lets the ball drop in left field. And Marissa getting a sun double. And Cargo scores. Rockies increase their lead by two. But the fun's not over yet. Antonio Sensatella, great pitcher, just wearing one batting glove on the wrong hand. But who cares? Because he's able to drill the ball up the middle, getting his first two RBI of the season. Rockies up 7-3. to three, But the fun stops in the six for the Rockies. When the Red Scott Schiebler launches a three-run homer, the Reds taking back the lead from the Rockies, and the Reds win it 12-8. to eight. Not one of my favorite places, a city of brotherly love. And that's where the Rapids are taking on the Union. First half, Rapids moving the ball down the field. That's Caleb Calvert, surrounded by three defenders, finds a way to put the ball in the corner of the net. His first ever goal in Major League Soccer. It would be a different story in the second half. The Union tie the game up off a penalty kick. Then the Rapids started unraveling. Calvert gets a red card, making the Rapids play down the men. The remainder of the game, Tim Howard and the Rapids fall the Union 2-1. That's all for Sports Extra. I hope you go out and have a great day. A family thinks they lose a furry family member while on a road trip. Well, coming up, how a community band together to make sure a sly cat got home safe. And a student taking his love for learning to the next level, the amazing attendance streak that is inspiring others to go to class. It's 730 Spring Storm Watch. It's shaping up to be another great day. Here's a live look over the mountains and across the metro. It's a sunny day, but will it stay? Hmm. Well, Vice President Mike Pence pays a very special visit to a survivor of a school shooting. How this unexpected student reacted to the memorable meeting. And you can help make sure our students have books to read over the summer where you can drop off donations. Now you can get rewarded for helping those in need. It is 731. Thanks so much for being with us on this Sunday morning. It is a very nice start to our day and we'll gradually see our temperatures slightly warmer than yesterday. Already warming up to 47 degrees downtown. A mix of sun and clouds and 47 out at the airport where winds relatively calm from the south southwest sustained at six miles per hour. Now our uh, camera out at Loveland ski area as you can see we're under a partly to mostly clear sky in our high country but we do have the chance of picking up a little more moisture as we head into the afternoon and evening hours temperatures though outside it's a cool start to our day from steamboat down through Gunnison we're in the low 30s at our valley levels 41 in Sterling 42 in Greeley and our high temperatures for today slightly warmer than yesterday will be in the low 60s across the Denver metro area Highlands Rancher at 64 degrees Boulder in the upper 50s 40s and 50s into our mountains but here's your first Alert. This is one of the coolest days on our seven day forecast. Things are really going to start heating up as we head into the later portions of the week. Also, we'll take a look at where those storms will roll through later on this afternoon coming up in just a few. Eric. All right, Katie, thanks. This is hard to believe. Every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. has a stroke. Can you believe that? That's according to the National Stroke Administ uh, Association. Rather, Today's survivors and their supporters are focusing on spreading stroke awareness. This is important. Registration for today's run and walk kicks off in just about 30 minutes. Denver 7's Amanda Dextilio. She's live at Hudson Gardens with our look this morning. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, it's really coming together out here in Littleton. This is ahead of that comeback trail event. We already know that 350 people are already registered for this walk and run, and you could be a part of that if you get here at 8 this morning for registration. We want you to take a look at what's going on right now. They've got that beautiful balloon arch up. This was different from the last 30 minutes, but again, the run 
and the reason behind it is stroke awareness. Now, the National Stroke Association says nearly 7 million stroke survivors live in the U.S., and that number is supposed to increase to 10 million by 2030. The association also found 17 million people are affected by strokes globally, making it the second leading cause of death and a leading cause of disability worldwide. So if you want to get involved and be part of this supportive effort, you got to meet here at the Hudson Gardens in 30 minutes. Bring $25 to participate. We're going to be following all this development all morning long for you from Sunny Littleton, Amanda Del Castillo, Denver 7. Sunny Littleton, I like that. With Memorial Day just over a week away, the community came together to honor Colorado veterans. Today was the end of the Thank You for My Freedom Tour. 108 Colorado veterans who lost their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan were remembered at Lincoln Park in Denver. Governor John Hickenlooper says he will not be calling lawmakers back to the Capitol for a special session this spring. The governor had been considering a move as a way to get lawmakers to find more funding to fix roads and bridges across the state. On this weekend's Politics Unplugged, Marianne Goodland of the Colorado Independent tells Andrew Hio that without legislative input, Colorado voters may be faced with at least two different ballot options. So people sitting at home are saying, all right, how are we going to get our roads fixed? I mean, they only allocated, what, $1.88 billion? That was, and that was in the hospital provider fee right. bill. But out of that $1.88 billion, only about $1.1 billion would have gone for CDOT's sort of master list of, of transportation projects. And that leaves him short over $2 billion. So in, into the rescue comes the Independence Institute and the Colorado Contractors Association. And one of the reasons that, that we believe the governor wanted to have a special session if, if he had taken that route was to sort of head off these ballot measures at the pass. Uh -huh. The Contractors Association and the Independence Institute both have their own ideas about how to fund transportation. The Independence Institute wants to do it with existing state revenues. The contractors want to do a sales tax similar to the proposal that was offered during the session. You can hear more of what Marianne told Ann about the decision to not call a special session today at 4 o'clock on Politics Unplugged. A school shooting survivor in Ohio met with Vice President Mike Pence yesterday. 17-year-old Logan Cole was critically injured at West Liberty Salem High School in January. Cole met the VP after he spoke at an Air Force base near Dayton. I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just amazing. It's overwhelming. Ah, what a smile on his face. The shooting in January left another student with minor injuries. The suspect, 17-year-old Eli Ray Serna, is facing murder and other charges. Pence is on a three-state tour this weekend that will also take him to Pennsylvania and Indiana. Imagine having a love for reading, but no books to read. For thousands of students in the metro area, that's a reality. With this book, like, when you read it, you kind of, like, go into their world. And for students like Tony, we're collecting books for our third Books for Kids book drive. This year, you can drop off your donations at any Salvation Army store or at La Fogata restaurant. The books will be distributed to kids in need before school lets out for the summer. There's books on shelves across Denver that are just be waiting to have a new life. Our kids can't wait to get their hands on them. And not only can your donation help others, but if you donate at the Salvation Army, you can get 40% off any purchases that day. And if you donate at La Fogata, you can get a free dessert. And if you have lunch or dinner at any of the three restaurants in the metro area on Monday, the owners will donate 20% of all proceeds from all food and non-alcoholic beverages sales to books for kids. We have to say it together. La Fogata. It's hard I messed for it me. up yesterday too. I, La Fogata. We got I don't know. I don't know how we can remember it, but that's But donate books. It's for a great that's cause. What, that's and what you get a dessert. About. Exactly. <laughs> but parents they get a real scare actually at an elementary school. We're talking about scabies, an outbreak that sweeps the campus more on that. Yikes, what the superintendent says parents now need to know to prevent their kids from coming in contact with scabies.